Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Just ahead of Jeff Patterson, Donnie and Dolly, by the way, presented by Able Auctions this Saturday. Able Auctions will sell thousands of police-recovered items, including rare Oyster Perpetual and Submariner Rolex watches, Rick, high-end jewelry, oh. hundreds of police-recovered <laughs> stolen bicycles. You sound excited. Tools, construction equipment, and more. For info on this auction, other auctions, or to get your assets sold at auction, go to ableauctions.ca or email sales at ableauctions.ca. Sales at ableauctions.ca. What happened to the lights on our set here? What right. happened? Do we know? <clears throat> well, they're, they're not on. Yeah, the we're, little we're, blue we're, trim lights. So we're working on them, and I have a bad suspicion that Dolly was unplugged them. He kicked something. Because oh. he usually unplugs things. Hold on a second. Don't touch the plug. No, hold yeah, on, yes, hold on a second. Please. I think I unplugged this. Hold on. Is it, if is that's it on what yet? it is. No, no. Just, is it on yet? This is just. There's so <laughs> many plugs here. <laughs> this is incredible. Just, oh, hold on a sec. Just stop there, Mr. Fix-It. Hey. No, no. Is yet. it on yet? So okay. maybe, maybe you didn't do it. I, I, I'm still not know, buying it. I don't know if I can do the rest of the show. Why? I'm going to be off. Why? Yes. Everything has to be perfect, which rarely happens here. The desk lights are off, but let's bring in. One of the lights of this city, Jeff oh, Patterson. Oh, one of the bright Jeez. lights of this yeah, city. Yeah, I mean, there oh. you go, right there. Wow. From Sakaris and Price, uh, Jeff Patterson, Canucks in Colorado tonight. How are you, sir? Did you watch soccer uh, last night? Well, a couple, couple things. I'm just taking notes on segues. That was a fine uh, <laughs> move from Ryan. But I joined the show. I have to admit, I joined the show like a minute late, and so I didn't catch right off the top. I came into the program today, and I heard something about batteries and being kept up late in the hotel. And I <laughs> thought, did I miss another Dolly Wall story? Best Western. <laughs> best Western. Uh, best Western. Going back to the 80s, the BC Lions. We did it. Anyways. <laughs> did you I watch did watch the, soccer. You did. I and, watched and, soccer. It was, yeah, this is incredible. I mean, this is never in my lifetime did I think that we would go into these games now as favorites. Like not, it's not just a chance, but... You know, and I heard him talking about the conditions, and I'm all for using uh, atmospheric conditions, whatever, to our advantage. Although I think if played in perfect conditions, like this team is good enough. They score mm -hmm. goals. That's just something we've never seen in our lifetime. I think if it played in perfect conditions, they would stand a pretty good chance against sides like Mexico now. So this is just really exciting, and let's just hope that you know the, the schedule in the final couple of windows – is going to be difficult with all sorts of travel and quick turnaround, but these guys have come so far and can almost taste it, and let's hope that they can get it across the line and qualify for the World Cup because uh, it's just there is such a groundswell of excitement in this country right now any time that they step on the pitch. Uh, switching to hockey. There's, there's, a, there's a segue for you. <laughs> okay. Speaking of cold, uh, the Canucks. Yeah. Avs at, uh, at Rogers Arena. Did you anticipate a major move before this homestand, Jeff, given what went on on the road? Donnie, I, I've kind of given up trying to figure out what goes on with ownership. I mean, they've sat and watched this for eight years, and there was always this talk in this market about uh, this ownership group couldn't handle a rebuild. They could have rebuilt this thing twice over in these eight years, and yet they didn't want to do a rebuild. They wanted to take shortcuts, shortcuts. Don't get you where you want to go uh, in professional sports. And this is exhibit A now. So uh, it's come this far. And apparently they've been okay with everything that's happened with the GM for eight years and the same coach for five. And this idea that they needed a meeting yesterday to figure out what's going wrong. Like, what are they not seeing that so many in the media and so many in the fan base are seeing and have seen for for far too long now. So the idea that it had to come to some sort of meeting after a 7-1 mm. loss the other night and then giving up seven the next game in Vegas and, you know, even the other night in Anaheim. Uh, and that was always going to be tough three and four with travel, but they couldn't even run out the clock properly against Anaheim. You know, and three to one becomes five to one and it's just piling on and here they are. So, um, you know, was I expecting change? Honestly, I expected change last year when they lost six in a row in February and they fell... Uh, five games below 500 and out of the mix, but they weren't having to sell tickets then. So I guess I understood that a little bit, that maybe the priorities were a little bit different. So uh, I, I can't imagine that it can continue and be allowed to go on a whole lot longer. And yet for all the reasons that I listed off, I'm not going to be shocked if the status quo remains. It would be nice. And Rick talked about this earlier. Like at some point, 
those best players, the ones that are being play, paid to uh, perform and produce, it certainly would be a start for this organization to try to turn this thing around. Because until Elias Patterson gets going, I just don't know how they reverse the course on uh, what is uh, a dismal start to the season and we're just 16 games in. Jeff, put aside the 32nd ranked penalty killing. When I looked at this team in the offseason, I thought, you know what, top nine, they're going to, the, goal scoring is not going to be an issue. Jeff, it just was not supposed to be, and yet they've got the 26th ranked offense, 26th on the power play. What's going on? Like, why are they having problems scoring goals when they shouldn't be? Well, Pedersen's a huge part of it, and I think it's never one guy, but he has to take some of this on, and we don't hear from him very often in these uh, new times with the protocols. He's brought out sort of once a week, so it's really hard to sort of be able to get a full read on you know, where he is mentally and obviously on the ice, it's just, he doesn't look like the guy that took this league by storm in those first two years. And so uh, it is troubling. I know people wanted to give him a little bit of time, but let's be honest here. He's had 16 regular season games. He got a couple of preseason games in. He's up to yep. 18 games played. Like how much longer do we have to go? He has two five on five points. He has three mm -hmm. even strength points. And one of them was a, a second assist on JT Miller's overtime goal. So that was three on three, 16 games in. He hasn't scored a five on five goal and he has two five on five points. Like I cannot wrap my head around that for a guy that scored 10 goals in the first 10 games of the national hockey league and looked like his trajectory was just on a path to the moon. And so he just doesn't look at all like that player. If he's upset, you know, sorry, suck it up. You're getting paid to be a star. So I do put a lot of this on him, but even their good news stories, guys, like this is where they are. You know, Bo Horvat is the captain. He got off to a nice start. Remember the game in Seattle at the tail end of the road trip? Two goals to lead them to victory. And he comes back home in the Minnesota game on the homestand, the home opener. You know, that bull rush to the net and scored there. And it looked like, yeah, like the captain is going to be the guy that takes this team. He's got one goal in his last nine games. And Connor Garland, the city fell in love with the angry little elf. Where's that guy from the road trip? He's got 10 without a goal now. So even the good news stories early in the season have gone dry. And so, Rick, I'm with you. Like, 26th in the league in offense just makes no sense whatsoever. And there's been so much focus on the penalty kill. And you can't take your eyes off it right now. I mean, it's that bad. It's historically bad. But it's also masking a power play that outside of the game against Dallas when it scored three times, those are the only three power play goals the Canucks have scored in their last nine games. How can that make any sense? Even if these guys are pouting, you would think that the star players, the offensive guys, that the power play would be an area where, you know, if they don't like the coaches' systems and dumping the puck in and chasing, like, just go freewheel on the power play, have some fun, and let your skill flow. And the power play has been dismal, and I don't mm -hmm. think it's getting enough attention because the penalty kill has been that much worse. Absolutely. Maybe Kyle Laren is is available. Hey, very quickly, uh, Jeff, uh, Jerome Ginla officially inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame earlier this week. If I've got this right, you covered Jerome Ginla when he was playing junior hockey up in Kamloops. What are your memories? Oh, so many, Donnie. Uh, you know, every bit what people have seen and heard about incredible hockey player, better person, and always loved when Calgary and then the many other teams he ended up playing for would come through Vancouver. You know, he's one of those guys that always had time for just a quick chat and visit. And, you know, and so that meant a lot to me that, you know, I remember him as a teenager and then to watch him develop into this guy that ultimately got to the hall of fame. But, you know, one of the things that stood out for me this week was thinking back fondly my first year calling Kamloops Blazers games. They won the Memorial cup in Kamloops in 1995. Mm -hmm. It was a stack team, one of the all time great junior teams. The following year, they turned so many guys pro that they didn't have nearly the same kind of team. And yet Jerome McGinley had 63 goals in 63 games and 16 more in 16 playoff games, 79 goals in the 79 games that he played that year on a team that really wasn't that good. And yet he just dragged them into the battle and onto the score sheet on a nightly basis. He was that good. And so it was, you know, I think it was indicative pretty early on that this was a special player that was destined to do some amazing things in the National Hockey League. So uh, really happy to see him get his honor this week. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Talk to you next week. Okay, guys. Thanks.